Welcome to a year in the nature journal. In this series, I'll be guiding your nature study for an entire year, following the natural rhythms of my own nature journal practice. Each week will be dedicated to a specific subject. This week is lichens and mosses. Lichens and mosses are a great subject for winter study, as they begin to stand out once all of the leaves and foliage around them have become brown and dead. I typically go in search of lichens and mosses after storms, when they and the twigs they grow on have fallen to the forest floor. They're easy to spot at the base of trees, and if you look at the right time, you'll find many different lichens around the bowl of a single tree. Mosses can typically be found in shady or wet areas. If your backyard or woodland has a creek in it, chances are there's moss growing nearby. My woodland has an abundance of mosses growing on the floor. We'll be focusing on two types of lichens and two species of moss this week, though you're invited to search for as many different species of lichens and moss as you like. Lichens of the week are fruticose lichens, or the shrubby ones that have tendrils, like this one, or the flat ones that grow in folds like ribbons. As for the mosses, I've chosen reindeer moss, usually found in rounded clumps, and sphagnum moss, which is made of little tree-shaped tendrils, sort of like tiny evergreens. Once you've gathered your lichens and mosses into your pouch or basket, you can take them back home to paint. Having an in-real-life specimen to paint is extremely helpful because it helps you see the specimen in 3D as opposed to a 2D photo. That way you can become familiar with the shapes and contours and folds, and really understand the space that the specimen takes up. I like to gather my specimens and arrange them into reads for the title pages of each month, like I'm doing here. So this is going to be the first page of January in my journal. Of course, you're allowed to observe your specimens however you like. If you enjoy a more scientific-based approach, you may like to take more detailed notes about their size, shape, color, and structure. If you enjoy a more artistic-based approach, you may like to arrange your specimens in pleasing compositions, or take creative liberty whilst painting them. Remember that there are no rules when nature journaling. If you're new to the practice, you may like to experiment with different approaches to find which fits you best. And you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Now that I'm ready to start painting my wreath, I've just made a quick sketch of the general shapes that I see within it. Keep in mind that when you're drawing or painting in your nature journal, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate to life. You're allowed to change things and move things around or take things out completely. I certainly do. Sometimes it's best to simplify things a bit so you're not spending too much time worried about what something looks like. It's easy to become overwhelmed when you're trying to focus on so many little details from the start. For paints today, I'm using Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolors and Gouache. Right now, I'm just making a very watered-down paint. My first step in painting is to just fill in colors where I see them and fill out the general shape of the thing I'm painting. So I'm just going around and picking out areas of color in the wreath and placing them in my sketch where I feel they belong. Now I'm painting the sphagnum moss. So I'm just adding this yellow green wherever I have sphagnum moss in the wreath. I'm not really thinking much while I do it, I'm just copying the shapes I see. I'm using a blue green now to fill in the areas that contain the lighter bits. So that's going to be the lichens and any bits of reindeer moss. If you haven't used watercolors much or are completely new to them, a good tip to know is that you layer from light to dark. So you want to work your way down from the light bits or the highlights to the dark bits or the shadows. I find this to be challenging personally, as when I work, things tend to make more sense for me beginning with the dark bits and moving up to the light bits. This is why gouache is great, because it's easier to work from dark to light since gouache is layerable. You can paint the bright bits on top of the dark bits, so you can work from what's furthest away from you to what's closest to you. So I'll be adding gouache to this watercolor soon. 
There's no reason to be committed to any one medium. You can use a mixture of things. Sometimes I use acrylic inks as well. Sometimes I only use gouache or only use watercolor. You can experiment with what you have to find what works best for you. In the second layer of paint, I'm just picking out some of the shadows and adding these with the watercolor. So I'm just going to keep building up my layers until I have the amount of detail I'm happy with. I thought I would talk a little bit more about foraging for your specimens while you're watching me paint this wreath, or maybe you're painting along with me, which would be really lovely as well. Lichens and mosses are a nature study subject you can find just about anywhere during all seasons. That's why they were the first thing to come to mind when I had to choose the nature study for this week. Of course, you can find mosses on the ground, but lichens can be frequently found there as well, especially after a hard wind or rain. They come down on twigs or bark, or sometimes they are just by themselves, having detached from the branch they were living on. Looking at the bases of trees is an excellent place to start your forager's journey for lichens. When looking for mosses, they tend to grow in shady or moist areas. So if you have access to a creek or a particularly shady corner of property, you're likely to find moss there. It can even be found on your porch railings or the sides of buildings. If you don't have access to woodland on your own property, you can go looking at a local park or a wildlife area. Just be sure if you intend on collecting specimens from public spaces that you look up the rules and regulations for foraging natural specimens from that area, as it's against the law in some places to move them. Of course, you don't have to actually collect them. If you don't feel comfortable collecting natural specimens, you can always take photos. Working from your own photography is the next best option, and I'll be sure to talk about this in a later video as well. However, if you are coming back home with a basket full of lichens and mosses, please be mindful that both are living and that other creatures make their homes in them as well. When foraging, it's a good rule of thumb to remember that you should never take the first or last of anything. Tiny changes can have big impacts on the ecosystem. Lichens and mosses become dormant when they dry out. So if you find some that are crispy and dried, that doesn't mean that they're dead. Once you're done studying them, you may return them to the outdoors, where they'll receive the right circumstances to continue their lives as they were when you found them. I've almost finished painting my wreath now. And as you can see, it doesn't quite look like the reference, and that's okay. I've put about an hour of work into this painting, and I'm not really interested in spending any more time than that on any of my nature journal illustrations. As long as I can generally tell what it is when I look at it, I'm happy with it. Now that I've finished painting, I'm going to add in the title. So I'm just measuring out my page here because I want to make sure that my writing is straight. I'm going to be using my acrylic inks to write in my journal. So this is a mixture of inks that I've created myself. You can use walnut ink, you can use a regular pen, you can use pencil. Anything you have available to you will work fine. Alright, that's going to be the end of my first page, my January title page. If you'd like to download or print my guide to the lichens and mosses of this week, you can go to my Etsy shop. The link will be in my description, along with my Patreon link, so you can access all of the blog posts and any additional information regarding a year in your nature journal. Thank you so much for joining me, I'm so happy to have you here. And I'll see you next week for our second week of nature study.